Hello guys, we're here at the Poinsett Bridge, uh, located in, well according to where you read, it's either Landron, South Carolina, or Traveler's Rest. But at any rate, it is uh, located in Greenville County, North Greenville County, in, uh, in the mountains of Greenville County. And as you can see there, uh, the bridge was built in 1820 by Abraham Landing, Acting Commissioner of the Board of Public Works, and was named for Joel L. Poinsett, who was a lot of things in South Carolina, involved in politics and other things, but uh, the bridge was named after him, even though, from what I've read, he did not do a lot of work here, well, none, really. He wasn't even here that much, but you know, being involved in, in politics and being a uh, well-known person in the state of South Carolina, I guess has its perks, and having a bridge named after you is, is one of them. And this is a picture of the bridge itself. Uh, it was part of what was called the Saluda Down Roadway, or not Saluda Down, but Saluda Mountain Roadway. And it was part of a project that, from what I have read, was started actually in Charleston, South Carolina, as Charleston at the time was, of course, a port city, still is, but uh, they were in competition with Savannah and, to a lesser degree, New Orleans. But it was determined that in order for Charleston to thrive, and of course the state of South Carolina, they had to open up their trade routes. And so a state road was built from Charleston to Columbia, and from Columbia to Greenville, and through Greenville County to open up the uh, western North Carolina avenues and eastern Tennessee and points beyond. Now the bridge itself is built over what is called Little Gap Creek, and the creek flows from east to west, I believe, that's right, and, and the bridge crosses the stream north to south. So if we look this way we will be going from north to south and this is looking back the other way from where we just came which would be south to north and of course this is the original part of the Saluda Mountain Road not much of it is left and there were actually three bridges built in this Saluda Mountain Road area and the other two are now located in what is now the Greenville Reservoir so they're underwater and so this is the only bridge of the three that still remains Now I've read that the bridge itself is about 130 feet long and I didn't see any mention of how wide it actually is but I don't know, looks to be maybe 12, 14 feet wide and it is listed in the National Register of Historic Places that happened in 1970 and this is part of the 120 acre Hornset Bridge Heritage Preserve and these stones were quarried here locally as a matter of fact I've read that these stones were 
quarried just right here in this area where the bridge was actually built. And they used the stone and mortar to construct the bridge. And I've read that they actually hired stonemasons from some of the northern states to come down and, and do the work here, not only on the bridge, but also the road. Here is one side of the bridge, and you can see the creek. And I've read that it, it flows from east to west, so I guess this would be the east part of the bridge, or the eastern side. And you can see how it kind of get an idea of the height of the bridge itself from the creek to the top of the bridge. Here is a closer shot of the bridge arc and the water flowing under the bridge. It really is a beautiful bridge. Of course, and it's in pretty good shape to be built in 1820. I don't know how well this is going to come out, but trying to give you an idea of how the stonework looks inside the, the tunnel part there of the bridge. Now when you first come and walk across the bridge from the parking area, there is a walking trail that heads off that way. So I'm not sure if that was part of the original Saluda Dam Road or not. And I see that the looks like a tree is falling across the trail. And we won't walk it today, but it is there if you do want to do that. And this is the other side of the bridge, and I'm assuming it's the western side of the bridge, if I'm correct. And you can see the what they call the Gothic Arch. And I'll get a little closer and show you the keystone, which at one time, the year 1820, was, uh, you could see it in the keystone, but over time that has worn away and is no longer visible. But this is certainly a great view of the bridge. And there is the keystone, as you can see, uh, the date is no longer visible, but I have seen pictures or drawings of the bridge where the date was there, but, you know, the bridge is very old, so time and weather has, I guess, worn it away. This side of the bridge has allowed me to get a little closer to the tunnel. And you can see the stone, the stonework. And that is the top of the arc. I am actually standing on some rocks in Little Gap Creek, taking this picture 
So hopefully I won't slip and fall on some of these slick rocks. This is certainly, certainly a beautiful bridge, and it's a beautiful area that we're in. You can hear the creek, and other than that, it's very quiet. Now, of course, the bridge is said to be haunted. As most old locations are. But they say that the hauntings occur at night. So, I don't plan on being here at night. It's about, I guess, 9.30 or so on, uh, on a Friday morning that I'm here. So, I'll be long gone before the angry spirits come out. Hopefully. And this is a shot of the Little Gap Creek as it leaves the bridge and heads on about its journey. Now, a lot of people think that Robert Mills actually designed this bridge and the other two bridges that were part of this roadway that, as I said earlier, are now under water the Greenville Reservoir, but there's no proof, actually, that Robert Mills did design the bridge. Uh, a lot of people have researched it, and they can't find any concrete evidence that he actually designed the bridge. And as a matter of fact, he was actually living in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, when the bridge was built and didn't come back to South Carolina until December of 1820. But many people do point to the design of the bridge, especially the Gothic arc that you see, and say that only an architect would have done that. And Apparently, Robert Mills had some correspondence with people in South Carolina uh, for a period of time before the bridge was actually built as he was wanting to uh, gain employment with the state of South Carolina and actually ended up doing just that. But as I say, if he did design the bridge, it was done from afar because he was in Baltimore. Now, Robert Mills was a well-known architect. As a matter of fact, as I said, he is credited with designing the Washington Monument and was actually hired by President Andrew Jackson uh, in 1836 as a federal architect. And not only did he do the work on the Washington Monument, he also designed the Treasury Building and the Post Office there in Washington. So, but there are some people who think that uh, William J. He was also a trained architect and was a member of the Board of Public Works when this bridge was constructed that he may have designed the bridge. So there is some controversy about the bridge itself as far as who designed it. And Abraham Blanding is given credit for actually overseeing and being a part of constructing the bridge itself. Well, we're here at the Campbell's Covered Bridge near Gowansville, South Carolina. And this bridge was actually added to the 
uh, Register of Historic Places on July the 1st, 2009. It is the only covered bridge in the state of South Carolina. And Galvinsville is in Greenville County, South Carolina. And uh, so we'll head down and get a little closer and take a look at the bridge. So here is the Campbell Bridge. It was built in 1909 and 38 feet long and 12 feet wide. And it goes across the uh, Beaver Dam Creek. And it is located at 123 Campbell Covered Bridge Road. Beautiful bridge. Now I don't know how well this will turn out, but I'm in, in the bridge now. Just uh, hopefully y'all can see these this video here, give you an idea of kind of what it looks like inside, and you can see the construction of it. It's got a tin roof. As you can see. And you can see the cross ties there. Now, as you can see, People had to leave their graffiti behind. Never understood that. I got to tell you, absolutely nobody cares that you've been here and to deface any property. But certainly a historic place like this is just absolutely ridiculous. Here is the information placard that uh, gives a lot of information about the bridge. You can certainly pause this and read it. And here's a shot of one side of the bridge. And Beaver Dam Creek it runs, runs under the bridge. Here's a shot uh, from the creek of the bridge. Don't know how good that's going to be, but we'll we'll check it out and include it if it's uh, if it looks good enough to be in the video. Again, a shot of Beaver Dam Creek. This is a shot uh, behind me from where I was standing of the creek. I'm sure you can hear it as it runs over the rocks. Beautiful place out here. Again, if not for the sound of the water, it would be very quiet. Here is another shot uh, from the end of the bridge where we just walked through getting ready to go back across the bridge and take a right and go down and get some more angles of the bridge itself here is a very nice shot of the bridge it really is remarkable
Again, this is the only covered bridge in the state of South Carolina. And as you can see, it's, it was built in 1909, so it's holding up pretty well. I know they've done some work to it, apparently, over the years, but holding its own, that's for sure. Very nice. And you can hear the Beaver Dam Creek there. Again, running over the rocks here, the water. Beautiful sight. And turn around here. And Another side of the creek as it heads on its merry way. Very nice. Another angle of the bridge. I just moved a little bit more to my right. You can see the, the stonework there that in front of and in back of the bridge. Here is another information placard, and I'll scroll down slowly. Hopefully we can use this, and if it is in the video, you can certainly pause it and read or look at the photos here. This is Stella Atkins, and she grew up in this area as a young girl, and was here all of her life, apparently, and she ended up buying this land that joined, I think, her family's land, and wanted to preserve this area. And then she left it to her daughter. And then her daughter sold it to Greenville County with the stipulation that they would keep it preserved for everyone to enjoy. I found this part here interesting about uh, the movie, the scene of a movie was filmed here in 1979. And the movie was called The Day of Judgment. And it featured an avenging angel riding a horse out of the bridge to take justice. So there you are. Never seen that movie, but I'll have to check it out now. <laughs> 